Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and it is another brand new episode of Who's That Cosplayer? This is the final episode for the holiday season. As you can see, we're all still here. We survived the great gingerbread war, and joining me on today's episode is Snowflake Baby. There we go. I knocked it out of the park. I'm sorry. Hi. I'm still recovering from the gingerbread awesome. war. Awesome. Feel it. But totally yeah, hey, good. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Uh, you know, I hope that you had a nice holiday and whatnot. And uh, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go ahead and get into this interview. But before we do that, Thank make sure that you me. like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And as D always says, podcast link down in the description, like, follow, subscribe. So let's go ahead and get into this interview. So first thing I want to say before we, you know, get deep into this thing, that's what she said, is you are the second person to come on Who's That Cosplayer and be cosplaying as Miss Joke. We had Amber Berry cosplay up here and um, Miss Joke, like that was the first My Hair Academia cosplay that she did. And, and I just think it's awesome that we have a second Miss Joke up here. It's like the Spider-Man thing where it's like both of y'all are gonna be playing <laughs> at each other. So yes. That's awesome. I mean, Miss Joke is awesome. I love her. So I cosplay Miss Joke because for Halloween, my fiance and I, we wanted to, we always do couples costumes every year because he's really in Halloween. He's not really much of a cosplayer. So I was like, you kind of watch My Hero Academia. Why don't you be Aizawa and I'll be Miss Joke? They're super cute together. And he was like, okay. So <laughs> that's what we did. So that's where the idea came from. And now I cosplay her. I do like more casual stuff for her too on my TikTok account. So yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And I just want to say, I mean, you made me laugh, so you used your quirk. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, something that we do here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks for all of our guests, we ask them, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So, tell everybody who Snowflake Baby is. All right. So, um, my name is Ashton, and I'm 27 years old. Uh, I've been watching anime for a long time ever since I was a kid. I mean, I think we all started with what, like Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Yu-Gi-Oh, mm. the classics, Dragon Ball Z, uh, some Hamtaro, but- Oh my God, not Hamtaro. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was about. I'm just like cute little hamsters, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, so I, let's see. When I got to middle school, I think is really when I started getting more into anime and stuff. Um, I remember Naruto was probably the one that I was like, okay, this is for, oh, I'm sorry, my cat is. <laughs> oh, hey, this isn't the first time that we've had animals <laughs> make cameos on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. You can't have your cat come on the screen and not introduce who your cat is. So let everybody that's watching right hey, now know who your cat is. So this is Gomez. Hey. Adam. This is my baby. He's very fat. He's a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Gomez? <laughs> is, there, is there a Morticia around? No, maybe maybe one day that would be cool. It would, but be. he's got a little brother, so. <laughs> but yeah, but continue. You said <laughs> that uh, you started with Naruto when it was getting bigger. Yeah. So my cousins got me into Naruto and I kind of wasn't really into anime as much anymore. I was like, oh, we're doing this anime thing again, guys. Okay. Like, I was like, I was kind of like not into it as much, but then I got really, really into it. Like I, I, I sat down and watched it with them and was like, this is amazing. Like, why did I ever stop watching anime? So it kind of like launched me back in. I started like watching Wolf's Reign. Um, I read Tokyo Mew Mew, um, some Inuyasha. I didn't finish Inuyasha. I'm actually starting that right. over right now, working on it with a friend. Um, and yeah, just like all the good stuff. And I started cosplaying when I was in high school. I would go to conventions with my friends. My first convention was Akon in Dallas. Nice. Um, that one was super fun. I didn't have like an anime cosplay, I don't think at the time, but I did like Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, later on, I got uh, Black Butler was my favorite in high school. So I cosplayed Sail Phantom Hive. I love Sail as a character. Um, I started getting an Aloise cosplay together too from season two, but I just tried it on recently and it doesn't fit me. So I'm like, dang it, I'm gonna have to figure <laughs> something out if I want to cosplay him. But um, I took a break from anime and cosplaying and stuff in general. Like I think, because I was like 16, 17, I think at the time. And then um, when I was about 19, I think it's kind of when I stopped watching anime and like cosplaying for a while. And it just kind of happened like that. It's not like I wanted to, it's just, I was in college and like, yeah. I thought I'd have more time to do that stuff. I was like, when I graduate high school, I'll have time to do everything. 
no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have less time. So yep. I yep. kind of gave it up for a while. And then I have two stepchildren. So one of my daughters, she actually started watching anime recently and she got me back into it. I went to go see the Demon Slayer movie with my friends. So I was nice. like, I'm stuck back in guys, let's go. So uh, that's, I just started cosplaying again like a few months ago and I'm just so happy about it. I love it. And I am so glad to be back into this community, so. Yeah. Yo, that's a really good origin story. Like, I really love that. Yeah. Um, you're welcome. You know, it's kind of similar to mine when it comes to anime, because I want to say I got out of it. I want to say like 2009, 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. somewhere around that time. I want to say like the last anime that I had watched was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood at the time. And what got me back into anime was, I mean, you know, of course, Dragon Ball Super came out. And I feel like... Yeah. I feel like you're, if you watch Dragon Ball, you're going to check out Dragon Ball Super. But it was My Hero Academia that really got me back into watching anime yes. again. And, you know, just seeing Deku and his story. And I feel like that he's a character that you can relate to. And, like, that's the reason why I love My Hero oh, Academia. Yeah. Um, Deku, he was the first anime character that I ever cosplayed as. You know, I've done cosplay before, but... Oh, my God. Yeah. It's like when I went to NekoCon this year, I was just like... Deku and Jotaro from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4 are going to be the characters that I cosplay as. And, you know, just being like cosplay is fun, but there's something about it when you cosplay as these characters, you go to the cons and I'm like, people, they want to take pictures with you. It's like, you're this character, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're yeah. Miss Joke. When you go to a con, you're Miss Joke. And everybody, like, they want you to make them laugh. Or if you see an Azawa, Azawa I'm sorry, um, you know, of course, you're going to take pictures with them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I, th I think it's awesome that, you know, your stepdaughter, she was able to get you back into anime because of Demon Slayer, because Demon Slayer is one of the popular animes that's out right now. And uh, the movie is awesome. I know season two just started. Oh, yeah. I, need, I need to watch the uh, season two episode five. Well, season two already started, but like the real season two has finally started uh, after the- See, I've been waiting the same thing, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely something that I need to get into and check out. So I wanna ask you like, how was it when you went to your first convention and you cosplayed and everything? Like, how was that feeling? Oh man, it was so long ago. I've gotta think about that. Um, <laughs> so like I said, I was kinda, since it was my first con, I don't think, so I was still like kind of getting, I guess, like trying to figure out what anime I would cosplay because I was like, this is so overwhelming. Like, I think at the time I was rewatching Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. And I was like, I would love to cosplay. I know um, you sent me a video to watch to kind of like prep for the interview and it was Captain All Might and her Mai Valentine cosplay is just like amazing. I was like, I'd love to cosplay someone like Mai or even like do a full Yu-Gi with the hair and stuff. But I'm just like... It was so overwhelming. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna have all that in time or get that figured out. So I cosplayed Alice from Alice in Wonderland, but um, my friend's grandma made the costume for me and we did a whole, I'm so sorry, go me. No, oh, you're fine. Go man. <laughs> I'm just chill. You're good, you got food and everything. But um, so my friend's grandma made us uh, Alice in Wonderland cosplay. So she was the queen of hearts. And there it I is was right Alice. there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I did not do that on purpose either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, but um, so we just kind of like went and we enjoyed it. We observed and we kind of just got ideas, I guess, for what we wanted to do in the future. And then um, I think one thing that has, it's so different now for cosplayers is I remember back then you really had to like plan out your cosplays. Like it was like, okay, I'm gonna go to like these three cons this year, if you're lucky. Okay, these are the outfits that I'm going to pick. And this is what I'm gonna do, the characters I'm gonna do. You spend all year getting ready for those cons. And then you take some photos, you do some photo shoots. Like we did photo shoots outside of that, but that was it. And it was just like, okay, job well done everybody. And then it's like, now I think with apps like TikTok and stuff, it's really more accessible to everybody. Yeah. I think that it's great that is if you have a wig for it, you can do it. Yeah, and you that's can just true. do stuff out of your closet. I think that is just, that's what's really helped me get back into it. It's just, it's so much more accessible. It's so easy now. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. And what's crazy with you saying that, um, that's how I came across you because I interviewed uh, Kitty Eve's play and you can watch her interview. Her. It is up here on the channel. 
but you and her had did uh, a TikTok live together and yes. you were cosplaying as Deku. And like how you said, like all you have to do is just put on a wig, put on some makeup, and bam, you're that character. And like you also said, with TikTok being so accessible, where you can just dress casually and then you can just make whatever video you want. And people are just like, okay, I know that this person's cosplaying as Deku. I know that this person's cosplaying as Ash from Pokemon. But you can also have the option to get fully into your costume and do these videos. Now, it's like, that's something that I would love to do because it's like, I'm on TikTok and I'm slowly growing our channel for the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks page. But yeah. it's like, I want to do some videos where it's like, I'm in actual cosplay. But like some of my friends who do this stuff, it's like, they do like 20 videos <laughs> and then they just put it in the draft. And it's like, these videos will come out eventually. I'm just like, yo, that is some dedication and heart right there. And I'm so happy for their growth on uh, TikTok because it's just, it, like you said, it's so accessible and people, they actually get to see you. It's not just a photo. And like, that's the reason why I love doing these interviews because when you interview cosplayers, you get to know who they are. You get to know, uh, you know, what their favorite animes are, what their favorite cosplays are. When you look at a photo, that's all you're looking at. You're just looking at a photo and that's it. So that's the reason why I do this. And with that, with that being said, the next question that I want to ask you is, you know, when you were going to the cons before you had stopped uh, participating in them, what were some of your favorite moments from going to them? So I will remember, I remember at Acon, I was blown away because I met a Zim cosplayer from Invader Zim. Oh, wow. Nice. And he like, he had the whole like head and everything. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I took, I was like, I need a picture with you. And cause I think with everybody, I was just kind of taking pictures of them, but this was when I was like, I need to be with you in this picture because yeah. I need to show people that this is just so cool. And so, um, that was really memorable. I know. We went to IkiCon a lot. That was the one that we went to a lot in Austin, Texas. Um, uh, San Japan, I think, was probably one of my favorite conventions that I've ever been to, though, in San Antonio. So um, that was the year I got to meet Little Karibo. Um, I got to meet the writers of the webcomic Tea House. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but it was um, not kid appropriate, but it was about a brothel, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I've but, never heard of that one, but yeah, please explain. <laughs> Who's that cosplayer? Dragon Sith cosplay. Yes. It was, uh, I mean, I don't know if I need to get to it more than that, but it was very beautiful. It was like the artwork was really nice and uh, I really liked the characters a lot. So when I saw that they were all going to be there um, doing like a booth and like a panel and stuff at San, in, like San Japan, I was like, I want to go. So I got to meet them. I got like some signed web comics that I purchased. I don't know where they are now. Hopefully my parents didn't find them. <laughs> probably at my parents' house somewhere. <laughs> it reminds <laughs> me of the, between of like the a meme. high school yearbook. So <laughs> it reminds me of the meme where it's just like when your parents get on your computer and they type in P yeah. and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but now I want to ask you now because the pandemic happened and you know the con scene kind of got put on hold hmm. and like now that the cons are rolling back out. Are you excited to be able to go back to them? Yes, I cannot wait. So this will be my first time going back to cons since I want to say I think 2015 was the last time I went to a convention. So um, and now I've got children that I can take with me and they're excited. So I know she was asking me the other day. She's like, I heard there's a con in June that I want to go to. And I was like, OK, well, let's look at the details and find out. And um, I know there's going to be Texas Smash going on, I think, in Irving, Texas in January. So I know that's coming up pretty fast, but I'd love to try to go to that if I can. Um, I'd love to do Anime Matsuri in Houston next year, if I can get the details on that. I know uh, my daughter and I, we want to do a Medusa and Krona cosplay from a Soul Eater. Nice. Little mother-daughter thing, although yeah. our relationship is much healthier than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's cool that you want to do these outfits with your daughter. It's the same thing like how you were saying uh, with your fiance. You can, you know, do these outfits and like you can do couples one, you can do family ones and you could just have a good time with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, of course, because I'm trying to think from My Hair Academia, because I know that you do Deku. Ooh, um, she can be airy. 
Oh, I've asked her. I'm like, do you want to be Aria? I think she's getting a little old, like to be, like, cause she. I was like, you could be Aria, and she was like, yeah, like I could be. And I was like, well, that's up to you. Like, I think she'd still make a cute Aria, but um, I know she did for Halloween a female Todoroki, so she had like the long wig, and then her best friend was female Dobby. Oh, so nice. So they were like running around together. It was super cute. I forgot to take a picture though, cause I'm terrible. But <laughs> it was really cute. <laughs> but hey, but that's all. I mean, maybe. Well, look, if she wants to be Todoroki, maybe you can be Endeavor. I'm, I now okay. be on to be honest with you. I have never seen a film Endeavor. You I've know what I'm saying? I've seen a few. There's some really good ones out there on TikTok that I've seen. So see, I'll have to I find have them. To... I'll tag you in them. Okay, cool. Yeah, because now I have to see them because I, I've like you know, of course, I see like the gender swapped All Might's and yeah, uh, Azawa and uh, I think that's it. I think, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's it, like for like teachers and stuff like that. But I've never seen uh, a gender swap endeavor, so yeah, I can't wait to see those videos. But um, what other cosplays are you going to be taking back to the con scenes when you go? So definitely Medusa. I think that's the next like big one that I want to do. Um, I was talking to some of my friends on TikTok about uh, doing Hummingbird from Dead Man Wonderlands. Um, I'm trying to get that together. So I'll probably start doing that like after the first of the year working on that. Um, Miss Joke. And I'd love to, I'd love to do CL again. Like maybe like one of his like prettier outfits, like more of the uh, more intricate, I think would be really nice. So, um, cause right now I just have like his typical like blue suit that he's yeah. got, which is nice, but I'd love like all the big frilly lacy, like, oh, I love. Like Black going all just, out. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's dope, man. So moving uh, along, I want to ask you, uh, what are some of your favorite animes that you're currently watching now? And I know My Hero is one of them, Demon Slayer. What else are you currently watching? Um, so I just finished rewatching Soul Eater. Soul Eater is probably like my favorite anime, honestly. Like it's just so fun. It's a little dark, but like still lighthearted. I love the characters. So it was really nice rewatching that. Um, Black Butler holds a special place in my heart. My daughter's got like a little Black Butler backpack. Like I got her really into it. So um, she's she loves it. Um, I'm right now I'm watching Blood Blockade Battlefront. I think it's Triple B. I always forget yeah, it. That's, that's a long out. name. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, like say that uh, three times fast. <laughs> Blood Blockade Battlefront. Yeah, I think it's Blockade <laughs> Battlefront, not Battlefront Blockade. I could be wrong. But uh, one of my friends on TikTok recommended that one to me. So I was like, or they were like, it's like Dead Man Wonderlands kind of, but different. So I was like, cool, I'll check it out. So I've been enjoying that so far. I'm watching Bungo Stray Dogs right now. That's another really good one. Um, I don't have like anybody to talk about. Like I've got like two friends now that I found out watch it. So I'm like, yes, but like in my, like in real life, like nobody watches it that I know. And I've recommended yeah. it to so many people and I'm like, please watch it with me. And they're just like, okay. Okay. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like that's how it is because I like, honestly, like a lot of uh, really good animes are on Netflix right now. Like yeah. Great Pretender, uh, Super Crooks, which is uh, something that me and B, we just did a review for. You can check that out. It is up here on the channel. Hey. um carol and tuesday is another one that's on netflix and you know a lot of people like they sleep on netflix animes unless it has like a like a big push on social media or something mm -hmm. yeah. like nobody's gonna watch it and with great pretender like the animation is beautiful the music is good the okay. voice acting is good and we also interviewed all of the voice actors on the great pretender you can watch those interviews here on the channel you know i'm always oh, plugging my stuff but uh, but no, I totally understand where you find the an anime and you're just like, yo, this is dope. I want the world to watch it so we can all talk about it. And just like, yeah, I'll check it out. I'm about to go back to watching Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. But no. Um, I watched, or sorry, go on. No, 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 you can go ahead. Oh, um, I was gonna say too, I've, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is another great one. one. Um, I know that one's really popular right now too. Um, I just watched a Kame Got Kill for the first time, I which need to I was just that talking out. about. Oh my gosh, it's so good and it's so sad. But I was talking to my brother about it this morning because I found out that he watched it all recently and I was like, I'm not going to say anything else. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. really good though. It's so good. It's worth it. I've heard. And uh, same thing like with uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. And then of course, again, like I say, I always plug stuff. 
We interviewed Laura Post and we interviewed Matthew David Rudd and both of them are on Jujutsu Kaisen okay. as well. Those interviews are up here on the channel. You know, that's what we do up here. We interview a lot of people. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you mention something, I'm going to plug it. If you mention Dragon Ball, I'm going to say something about Dragon Ball. That's just how we do it. I'm just here. honored to be here. So thank you again for that. Oh, for sure, man. I like, love interviewing cosplayers, like man. It's just like, everybody's awesome. And I feel like everybody needs to, I mean, of course you have TikTok now where you said earlier earlier it's accessible but um i just feel like oh, again on tiktok too like you're just doing videos and most of the time you're just doing lip, lip syncing and stuff like that so mm -hmm. it's just like people they really can't know who you are just by watching videos on tiktok so hopefully they'll check out this interview because you're an awesome person and um Thank you. Thank yeah you're you. welcome hey and the interview's not done yet hey we're not wrapping it up i still got a couple more questions no, not at all. all right <laughs> so, so the next question that I have for you is when you're not cosplaying and you're not watching anime, what are some of your hobbies that you're into? Um, so I work in the beer and wine industry um, professionally. And so like food and like beer and wine are very, very important to me. And just like, I'm a big foodie. So going out, um, I'm from the Austin area. So like we have a amazing food scene out here. So I'm always trying I've out heard. new restaurants. Um, we just got like ramen last night, like the good stuff, like, and I'm just, it's, I feel very lucky to be here. I'm also a vegetarian and our vegetarian and vegan food scene is also really great. So nice. I'm very thankful for that. Um, I think after this, actually for dinner tonight, we're going to like the Spanish restaurant. So I'm really excited that I haven't been there in years. So I'm like, yes, let's go. But yeah, that's a big thing for me. Um, I love my cats. They're, they're pretty cool. I've got two cats. So you guys met one of them. I'm a big animal lover. Um, what else do I do? I don't even know anymore. Got my kids. They keep me busy. Oh, I'm getting married this nice. in next week. Next, next week, congrats. So. Thank That's you. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Congrats. Yo, this is the first time that we've had an announcement that somebody's getting married up here. Really? Who's that cosplayer? So not only is this the first time that we've had another missed joke, but this is the first <laughs> time that somebody has made an announcement that they're getting married. And that's all like yo like like this is a really fun episode man like i'm, I'm really you. excited right now like your quirk is working because i keep laughing i can't i can't stop smiling I, I, that's how i feel like uh when the joker <laughs> shoots somebody with the the joker gas and the yeah. person just keeps on laughing but hopefully i don't die but uh but no i think that that's <laughs> awesome i also think that it's awesome too that you mentioned that uh in texas that there are a lot more vegan friendly options because I know like over the years, it's always because like one of my best friends, he's vegan. And here in Virginia, in the area that we live in, it's just like there are vegan options, but they're still getting there, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just awesome that, you know, where you stay at and, you know, all over, you know, the world that you know, vegan options are growing a lot more because it's like, I'm not a vegan, but I have had vegan food before and vegan food is bomb. You know what I'm saying? Y'all so watching much this? better than it was 10 years ago, even 10 years ago, honestly. Like I remember, because I've been vegetarian my whole life pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. My family's not vegetarian. I just kind of chose to be, but um, I just remember growing up and like, I'd be at a friend's house and they're like, oh, like didn't know what to feed me. They're like, we have a Boca burger Do you, and I'm like, no, I don't want to the burger. But now we've got like Impossible Meat and Beyond yeah. Meat. And mm -hmm. It's like we have some awesome food trucks out here. One of my favorites is Sassy's Vegetarian Soul Food. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. best vegan fried chicken I've ever had in my entire life. Like it tastes, it is, the texture is phenomenal. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, my friend, like he had went to ATL. This was like a few years ago. And he was telling me like that was the first time he had ever had vegan soul food and like he was just hyping it up and i was just like man i really want to try this so if i ever go to atl i'm gonna go to that restaurant that he was telling me about but you know with me being a really good friend whenever i have get-togethers i always make sure that i buy him like impossible meat and stuff like that yeah because the thing is like like how you said, you would go over to your friend's house and they wouldn't know what to feed you. And yeah. the last thing I want is for him and his girlfriend to come over here and we're all eating all this food and he doesn't have anything to eat. So I just always make sure that I always get vegan cheese, vegan meat, whatever vegan products I can find at the store so he's not left out. 
I always get it and then I cook it for him. And he always he always likes it. And whatever he leaves over, like I always eat the rest of it. And I'm just like, yo, vegan food is not that bad. So don't knock yeah, it until you try it. Absolutely. So, so with that being said, um, you know, I know that Christmas has come and gone. The great gingerbread war has happened. And one question that I've asked every single guest that I've had up here is, oh, it's two questions, actually. The first one is, what has been one gift that you have got for Christmas that was one of your favorite gifts? My pasta maker. My pasta mm. maker. I My parents, I told them one year they were like, like, what do you want for Christmas? Um, this was, I think, back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want a pasta maker. That'd be, I mean, ideally, like, that'd be a really cool gift. So they're like, okay. Well, so I didn't get the pasta maker on Christmas Day. And I was like, you know, like, they're expensive. That's fine. Whatever. Like, I have I got a lot of other cool stuff. Well, they totally pulled a, a Christmas story on me one day. Like, <laughs> you know, with the BB gun where they're like, oh, hey, what's that over there? Like, oh, wow, it's a BB gun. Like, so... <laughs> I, I was at work and I was like planning to go to my now fiance boyfriend at the time's apartment after work and stuff. And there, I was just going to go straight over because I was like, it's closer from my work. So they're texting me. They're like, no, you need to come home before you go to work. So I was like, is everything okay? Is there an emergency? What's going on? And they were like, no, just come home. And they were being so vague. And I was like stressing out. I'm like, is somebody dying? Like what is yeah. going on? So um, I go and they're just like, Oh yeah, like what's that? Like I, they, I go to their room and they're just like, "What's that in the corner right there?" And I was like, "This big box? Like is that for me? What is that?" And they're like, "I don't know. Why don't you open it?" Like straight up, like it was from a Christmas story, which is yeah. one of my favorite Christmas movies. And I opened it and it was my pasta maker and it was a nice like Phillips like. Yeah. Oh my god, I I haven't used it in a few months, but I love that thing and it makes really good pasta. And my fiance and the kids love it when I do make pasta. I like to make spaghetti carbonara a lot, so. Oh, hey, that's nice. And, you know, I didn't even know that there was a, a such thing as a pasta maker. So it's like you learn something new. I mean, because it's like, you know, I always hear people always talk about uh, rice makers and stuff like that, like yeah. rice pots, because it, it makes cooking rice a lot easier. So to even know that there is a pasta maker, like I feel like that that's interesting. And hopefully, uh, you know, everybody that's watching, like y'all learn something new and, uh, you know, hopefully you get a pasta maker, you know, Santa Banks, he might, <laughs> he might give you one next year. Just, uh, yeah. leave some, just leave some ramen and J-pop on the counter and uh, Santa Banks, he might show up. So down to second, I will say I oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say real quick. I will say I tried to make ramen noodles in the pasta maker one time and that did not turn out well. Um, <laughs> I think I, my fiance got me a pasta book or it's like a book of like noodles. So it's like pasta and noodles and different things. So yeah. I need to look in there and see what advice it has for making ramen noodles. Cause I would love to try that again, but I just put the buckwheat flat. Like it, it just completely like disintegrated. It was terrible. So wow. I'm work in progress. <laughs> yeah, now, you know, what's interesting about ramen because like I watch ramen videos all the time and you know of course you have like people who make the ramen like from scratch like the noodles mm -hmm. all of that stuff from scratch and then you see some videos where people will just take the 10 cent ramen packs and they'll just use the noodles from that but then like they'll make it like an authentic ramen like they don't even use anything from the packet the only thing they're yeah. using is the noodles and it's like, i feel I like know. like you're still getting your ramen fix and then plus two oh, yeah. down there are so many um, international markets now that you can go to so you can get the noodles from there. And then all you really need to do is just make the broth and everything and you're mm -hmm. good to go. But there are a lot of videos out there on how you should make ramen the correct way. And then some people will get at you if you make it the cheap way. But hey, as long as you're enjoying it, that's all that really matters, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So the last question that I have for you is another Christmas question. What is something that you like to do around the holidays for Christmas? What is something I like to do around the holidays? Um, so I've got my Christmas movies that I like to watch. In general, I'm not really a movie person, but mm -hmm. there are like three movies that I have to watch every Christmas. Elf, because I love Will Ferrell. He's my favorite. Um, I have to watch A Christmas Story on Christmas Day. Okay. That is one of my other favorite movies. Um, and the then usually I also Carbock Brewing in Houston, they do a beer called You Will Shoot Your Eye Out and it's like their holiday beer. That's probably like my favorite holiday beer. So I have to have like a can of that. It's got the little light lamp on it. Yeah. When I, um, I love it. And then 
Um, at night after the kids go to bed, I watch one called The Night Before that has uh, Seth Rogen. I know. That's a good movie. It's my favorite. It's that so is good. a good movie. A lot of people haven't seen it. Like It's amazing. It's so yeah, funny. It is. Like, uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Don Joseph Anthony Gordon-Levitt. Mackey, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. There we go. Yes. Yeah, that's a good movie. I like honestly, okay. I thought that you were gonna say that your third movie was either gonna be a nightmare before Christmas or Home Alone 2. Like oh, those okay, those are great choices though, like hundred percent. So yeah, but no, that's a that's a really good choice. Like that one came out of left field because I was not expecting that movie to be the last movie, but uh yo, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me up here on Who's That Cosplay. Thank this you interview is me. oh for yeah. sure. You're welcome. This interview has been fun. We've had a lot of first up here, a lot of seconds. And uh before I let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Um, so on TikTok right now, I think that's the only thing I've got going, but uh Snowflake Baby. It's like Snowflake X X B A B I I. All right, oh. cool. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, and everybody, you know where you can find me, your hero Benjamin Banks at, at KingBenji underscore Banks. On Twitter and Instagram, you can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you, everybody, again, for watching this interview. Make sure you check out some more of our interviews that we do have here on the channel, along with reaction videos and reviews. Make sure that you check out all our social media accounts, our TikToks, at Leveling Up Banks. I hope that you guys had a great Christmas. I hope that you guys have a safe New Year's. Keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next year on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.